Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Insightful Accountant webinar, 1040 Tax Preparation Automation, Gruntworks Demo, presented by Sarah Cavender, sponsored by Gruntworks. Insightful Accountant is an online news and information source written for small business advisors interested in the latest news and offerings in accounting technology. My name is Emily Hedrick, and I will be your webinar host. If you have any questions during the session, please enter them in the Q&A box and we'll try to address them. Everyone that has registered will receive a follow-up email with the handout and recording later today. Today's speaker is Sarah Cavender. She oversees the sales group at Gruntworks LLC. Sarah joined the company in 2015, starting in a sales position. Before she joined Gruntworks, she spent five years in sales and service for large enterprise size accounts with a Fortune 500 company. She received her bachelor's in communications from Western Carolina University. What she loves most about her job is interacting with customers all over the US. In her downtime, she enjoys being with her family, reading and being outdoors. Sarah, thank you for being here with us today. And when you're ready, you can get started. Thank you, Emily. I appreciate that um, introduction. And thank you, everyone who has joined today. Um, like Emily said, my name is Sarah, and I am with Gruntworks. And um, we're going to be going over some information on how to implement technologies within, within your firm, such as Gruntworks. We'll talk a little bit about who Gruntworks is, um, what we do here, as well as going through a live demonstration of the product. So again, I thank you so much for joining joining today. Um, when I'm going through this today, please feel free to ask questions, put those in the Q&A area, and we'll try to get back to you in that area during the presentation today, because of course we want to get your questions answered. So um like I said, in this webinar, we'll be going through how the 1040 tax preparation process can be streamlined and be more efficient to improve productivity by looking at your office workflow and following simple steps of using Gruntworks technologies. We will go through the rules of successful implementation when going paperless. We will discuss some proper scanning procedures, as well as I will be going through an overview, as mentioned earlier, um, of what Gruntworks is and a live demonstration of how to use the product. So um, let's go ahead and, and jump right in. So some things we put together here at Gruntworks when we're talking with firms um, is when you're looking at implementing a new technology into your firm, there are some rules that you can follow because successful implementation of a new technology takes dedicated effort um, and your firm really needs to develop a plan and stick to it when I'm boarding with an automation service provider and today we are going to go through these five simple steps that we have put together when looking at implementing a, a new technology okay so um, those five steps is know what you're automating appoint a a chief paperless officer, as we've, we've labeled it, or somebody that can be the primary contact within the firm um, learning that specific technology. Follow an incremental approach. Make it mandatory and manage expectations. So let's dive into that a little bit deeper. So you really need to know what you're going to be automating when you're implementing a new technology into your workflow process. Before you can successfully automate a process, you need to understand the actual manual process so you can then automate it. So what you wanna do is really start by mapping out every step in your office workflow and look at where you can replace or eliminate that manual process with automation. So here I have put together, you should be seeing on your screen, just the basic return preparation life cycle because we're really looking and talking about um, with Gruntworks, uh, 1040 automation. So the, the tax preparation process of that 1040 return and automating that. But here's that basic return preparation life cycle starting with the document gathering, going to data entry, electronic filing, finished document storage, and then client communication and return delivery. And when that next client comes in, this whole process begins all over again. So 
when you look at this graph or this image here on your screen, where could you be automating? Where could your firm be automating? Um, if it is the data entry portion, that's where Gruntworks can help. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But there could be other places within your firm, within this process, that you could be automating. And you can follow these simple steps to implement a new technology. Okay. So the second thing is appoint a chief paperless office or somebody designated as the person who understands and does the research on that specific pro product. Um, once you have decided to move forward with an automation software or service, your first step should be to assign a person to be in charge of that implementation. Um, this is someone you can trust to help with answering questions and rolling the technology out. Um, I have a, a firm actually who has done just that. They, they are a larger firm and they have designated two individuals within their firm to know everything about Gruntworks. And that's who people come to when they have questions about the product or the process, or if they run into a, a stumbling block, that person is their person. And you know, you can really do this no matter what the size of your firm is. If, if you just have two people in your firm, um, you know, have that one individual understand the process. And, and if, if there's anything that arises, they know who to reach out to within that organization that you're working with. Next step is to follow an incremental approach. So you want to make sure the automation programs are adopted throughout the firm. And really now is a great time to be looking and testing out different technologies while we have this short little window in this, in this crazy year we've had and getting everyone familiar with the product and procedures to make sure there are no issues during the, the heat attack season. And um, if, if there's any free trials or, or demonstration or a trial period that your firm can go through when you're looking at implementing new technologies, that's a great way to kind of take baby steps into the approach of implementing that technology. Make it mandatory. I mean, as creatures of habit, people will always choose what's familiar. I mean, I know I find myself often saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So if you make adopting a new automation system optional, most will simply choose the old way of doing things. So make it mandatory. Um, explaining to, to everyone that this is something you're going to implement as a firm and everyone is going to be doing this. Um, I actually have a firm that I'm currently working with who is doing just that. The owner decided we are going to move forward with this technology to automate our data entry so we can focus on processing more 1040 returns during tax season. Um, and she then moved forward with getting her two preparers on board. And now they're on board and now they're getting their administrative staff on board. So everybody feels like they're in this together and um, they're making it mandatory. And it's, you know, it puts the staff, moves the staff past that learning curve a whole lot quicker than if just one individual is doing it. Okay. Or it's optional. The next thing and the last and final thing is manage everyone's expectations. Technology is not magic. Be realistic and open to the fact that there may be a roadblock that has to be overcome. Um, but once things are work, worked out um, and worked through, in the end, it can be, be very beneficial. So you have to be flexible. You have to set a realistic expectation that the technology isn't going to do everything, but it can definitely help with um, a certain process or workflow. And then another thing, you know, when you're doing this, when you're implementing a, a new technology, it is important to document, 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 ev you know, everything that has been successful, or if anything has, there's been any frustrations. And I know this can be super tough during the craziness attack season when there's so many other things going on, you're working 15, 16 hour days. But if you can document some of the frustrations, once you come out of tax season, you know, you can really meet with your team, 
review the notes, review what worked, what didn't work, what could be done to make a process um, better for the firm and how you can benefit from that product. So those are some things when you're, you're looking at implementing a new technology, you should be thinking about um, with, with your workflow. Okay, so we're actually going to jump into the first polling question. Have you automated any part of your, your practice? And that should be coming up on your screen right at this time. We're gonna leave that up on your screen. Um, for you to answer, and then we'll jump into a brief overview about GruntWorks. And I have a few questions that have come through, so I'm going to go ahead and take this time to answer those questions while um, this polling question is being answered. One thing that I had, one question I had received, can you test a lot without being charged for GruntWorks? Um, and we're looking forward to the demo. And we are gonna be jumping into that demonstration part of the presentation here soon. And you will see when I go through the demonstration that we do have a free trial um, where we give you a $40 credit to test out our products and services. And that free trial never expires. So you can use it until you use all of that $40 credit. Um, so that is something we'll be going through. So I think we, we're done with that polling question. We'll move, move forward. It looks like, you know, um, some of you have already automated parts of your processes and a lot of you are actually interested in, in automating some parts of your, your workflow processes. So that is great. So we will move forward to talking a little bit about grunt work. So, here at GruntWorks, and I've already touched on this briefly, but we help with the 1040 tax preparation process. We're helping with the organization of the client's documents, the data entry on the federal forms. Um, by no means are we the preparer, but we're trying to assist with that preparation process. And we have found that 40 to 50 percent of, of time is spent just on the preparation of the documents. Um, and that's where we come into play. We were founded in 2006. Um, we have won several awards, primarily for our Populate product, which we'll be talking about here in just a second. Um, for security, because what's happening is you receive your client's documents, um, then you submit them to GruntWorks, and we verify and validate the data. So security, that is one of our number one priorities here. We do not take that lightly because we know we're handling very important information. Um, you'll see once we get into the demonstration, there's a portal that information is sent through. That portal goes through the SOC examination every year. We do that in October. We're actually just finished that up and we um, share that with our, our users every single year. Also with our um, human validation staff, which we'll talk about here in just a second, um, they have to follow proper procedures as well for security. So um, we, we really, really pride ourselves in the security measures that we take here at GruntWorks. Also, one thing that's, that sets us apart um, with our process is when you submit documents to GruntWorks, it goes through an automated OCR technology and then it goes through a US-based human validation staff who verify and validate the data. So making the data that we send back extremely accurate. So let's take a further look into the workflow process of implementing GruntWorks. So this is kind of just a workflow chart. Um, you receive your documents from your clients you then, depending on how you receive them, and I know this year has been an interesting year, so um, you may have more of a contactless way of receiving your documents, but if your client dropped them off or they mailed those documents to, to you, you can scan them into a PDF and then submit them to GruntWorks. If you receive the documents through a secure portal, or um, a secure way of getting those documents electronically. You can just upload the documents the way you received them from the clients and submit it to GruntWorks. And then you're given 
multiple options on what you can utilize Gruntworks for. So we have our organized products where, we, where we're taking those documents. We are bookmarking and labeling them by the payer name. The bookmarks are in the order of a 1040 in a searchable PDF format. So we're taking your client source files and putting it into a digital format. With our populate product, we're extracting the data off of the federal forms, putting it into a format that can then be imported into the tax return of most tax software packages. And that is where we're assisting with the data entry. And then our trades product is where we're taking the information off of brokerage statements, putting it into an Excel spreadsheet that can be put into the 8949 of the return. So when you submit the documents to Gruntworks, you get to choose whichever Gruntworks product you want to utilize. And that's where that automation comes into play. Then you download the files back from us and you review the information in the return. Okay, so that just kind of shows you um, how that workflow process works. And, and with Gruntworks and a question I get, you know, I have a lot of folks that are scanning in on the back end once the return's completed. You do have to change your workflow price process a little bit when, when implementing a technology such as Gruntworks because you have to scan in on that front end or, or get those documents together on the front end. Okay. So really that the main grunt works difference when you're looking at our technology, which is really defined as a scan and fill technology, is all documents that are being sent to us are going through that OCR technology, that human validation staff. So the accuracy of what you're receiving back from grunt works should be pretty spot on, really about 100% accurate. We, that's what we strive for. Um, I had a firm this year who submitted about 3,500 returns through us, and they had less than 0.5% error rate with the data that was received back. So like I said, very, very accurate. Um, but by adding that human validation step, the turnaround time is 24 to 48 hours from the time you submit documents to us to the time you receive them back. Now, all you need to get started with Gruntworks are things you, you most likely have in your office today or have in your remote office today. And that is Excel, Adobe, or a way to read and view a PDF, a scanner, if you're not receiving your documents all through a secure portal, and your tax prep software. As long as you have those things, you're ready to get started and you can really use Gruntworks from anywhere. So it's very easy to adopt into your everyday workflow. I'm going to show you, you should really be able to get up and running in less than an hour with Gruntworks. So I do want to touch on the scanning requirements. I know the conversations I've been having a lot with, especially with the pandemic and everything, most folks are receiving their documents through a secure portal. But for those clients that are mailing documents or dropping the documents off to you for you to work on, when you're scanning them and uploading to Gruntworks, we do not require you to purchase a particular brand or model of scanner. But we do have some suggestions on your scanner settings. We suggest that you scan in 300 DPI, scan in black and white, you want to make sure you're scanning into a PDF file format because that is going to create a clear image to us. And it truly is all about the scan image. You know, if you submit a bad image to us, the accuracy level is either going to go down or the turnaround time could be prolonged because we have to cancel it due to the fact that we can't read anything off that image. Um, so we definitely suggest that you scan in the original document if you have it, um, scan it in its original size. Don't try to put multiple documents on one page. Scan each document to its own page. If you have a flatbed scanner, make sure that tray cover is open. Um, don't scan anything with faint or faded text. Now, if you are receiving documents via secure portal and you're receiving, you know, images that have been taken off a mobile device, you know, those you need to really check that image quality because if, if you can't read it, we can't read it. Our technologies can't read it. 
Okay. But we definitely have some suggestions. Canon makes some great scanners that produce a great image quality, um, but you can really use any scanner. So we're now going to go to our next polling question. Number two, which tax software do you use? And there should be several options up here that appear on your screen. Now, if you have other, Mark Other, let me know what tax software you're using. I would be interested in hearing what other tax softwares are being used. And while that polling question is up, I did have another question that came through um, from Mark. So the question was, we download the files as well as the tax import file from Gruntworks, correct? And that is correct. So you are going to, when Gruntworks completes the verification and validation, the data, we're going to send the files back to you through a secure portal, and you're going to download that information to then import over into your tax software. And we are, after we go through this polling question, we are going to jump into that live demonstration portion so you can see that process in action. Another great question we had from Catherine, does Gruntworks handle handwritten paper book, paperwork like the client's charities or their Schedule C? Um, we will actually put that in the organized PDF, but we don't necessarily extract any data off of there for population. Um, I will show you, Catherine, in the live demonstration where that information will reside. All right, so it looks like we have some Drake Tax software users, a little bit of UltraTax, LACERT, Pro Series. I had other in there. I know some Intuit Tax Online um, with some of the responses I received. So we have a good mixture, um, which is great. So let's let's get into this live demonstration. Um, so you can see this process in action. Now, we have already touched briefly on the different products, but before we get into the live demonstration, I just want to define these for you so you understand what I'm referring to when going through that demonstration. So with our organized products, what we're doing with this is we're taking the documents that you upload to us, we are bookmarking and labeling those documents by the payer name, and we're putting those documents in the order of a 1040. So you have a digital copy of all of the client's files that you scanned in. With the populate product, this is where we're extracting the data off of the federal forms. And what I mean by federal forms is your W-2s, your 1098s, your K-1s, your 5498s. And we're putting it into a format that can be pushed into the tax return of your tax software. And then the trades product, this is an optional product. And this is where if you submitted a brokerage statement, we would extract every single line item off of that brokerage statement, put it into an Excel spreadsheet that can be imported into the 8949 portion of the return. With this product, we are not taking the totals or the summaries off of the brokerage statements. We're actually taking every single line item. So just be aware of that. And that's one of the reasons it is optional because you may not need all of that. Okay. So those are the basic definitions of each product. So now let's take a look at how Gruntworks works. So I am going to pull up the website on your screen, and this is how you get started. You should be seeing that it is the main home page of Gruntworks at this time. You're going to come here, and I believe, Catherine, you were the one that had asked a question earlier about um, a free trial or how can you test out the product, and this is where you're going to come. You're going to type in your email address here in the gray box and click on free trial. It will ask you for some basic information at your about your firm. You'll fill that in, and then you can log in with the credentials that you registered with. I will note, if you have multiple people in your firm, only one individual needs to sign up for the free trial to set up your Gruntworks account, okay? You can add multiple users in the actual platform itself, and I'll show you that here in a few minutes. So I'm going to log in 
and it's going to take me to the Gruntworks dashboard. Now this Gruntworks dashboard is really where I'm gonna do everything from. This is where I'm going to upload documents and receive them back. Now I do want to note because we do have some Drake Tax software users in the webinar today, um, I will be showing you the process is a little bit different with Drake Tax of getting the documents to us than what I'm showing right now. What I'm showing right now is for all of the other tax softwares, okay? Um, and But I'll, I'll show that we'll, we should have enough time to go through that process as well. So what you're going to do is you're going to come here to the main dashboard for Gruntworks and um, to utilize our populate product, you'll have to download what we call our Gruntworks agent by clicking on the download agent in the toolbar. You will download that. You only have to down that, download that once per year per computer, and it's what allows Gruntworks to talk to your tax software during population. But then you're really ready to get started so you can start setting up your clients. We have two ways that you can add your clients into the Gruntworks platform. The first way is if you wanted to export your client list out of your tax software, if you put it into this format that I have highlighted on your screen and put it into a CSV file, you can import up to 500 clients over into the Gruntworks platform at one time. And this I suggest as a best practice to get your clients into the Gruntworks application. The other way is just to simply add your client by clicking on this little, it's a person, person with a plus sign icon and typing in the client's first and last name and then the client ID. Now, the client ID when using the Populate product must match what you have set up in that tax software for that specific client. That's the unique identifier. You will click save. It will then highlight your client. And now you're ready to upload those documents. So the documents that the client sent to you are dropped off and you have scanned and saved on your computer. You're going to upload these here. If you click in this dotted box, you can browse your computer for the files and upload them. If you have two monitors, you can drag and drop the files over into this dotted box. And for my users that are using a secure portal to receive documents from clients, usually you probably get multiple files from the client and that's fine. You can just drag and drop them over here, upload them over because you can upload up to 15 files per submission or if they've dropped them off and you've scanned them in, you can just scan them all into one file, which is what I have done here. So this is 55 pages of handwritten documents, uh, W-2s, I believe there's a K-1 in there, um, a brokerage statement, all in this one file. But once you have uploaded all the files you want to, and it's highlighted in green, you will click the process files button and it's going to give you the different Gruntworks products. And this is where you can pick and choose what product you want to use on a return by return basis. So this is why I wanted to go over the definition of those products where you can simply do organize, no trades, populate, extract trades. It's completely up to you. You get to choose on a return by return basis. But once you're ready, you're going to upload the documents to Gruntworks. And it's going to show that job status as processing. It will also give you a timestamp, which you should see on your screen at this time. And that's when that 24 to 48 hours begins. Okay. Um, one thing to note during tax season, we work 24 seven. Um, so no matter if you submit it 1 PM or 1 AM, that's when that 24 to 48 hours begins. Okay. During off season, we work Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. But once you have those documents uploaded, you can move to another return to upload it or close out of Gruntworks completely. 
We've got the documents. We're doing the work in the background. Okay. Um, and then you'll just let that, that process. If you choose to receive an email notification, you can set up some preferences to receive an email notification or a text message alert. You will be alerted that the job is ready to be downloaded. And then you can come back into the Gruntworks application, find your client's name, click on your client's name, It'll have a job status as completed, and you will have some files here. And depending on what product you selected during process will be the product that, the file type that you'll have, okay? So I have had a few questions I do want to answer real quick. Um, one question I had was, in, is any of this being processed offshore? And the answer is no. Everything, when it's going through that processing and validation piece, it's going through our OCR technology first, and then it is going through our US-based human validation staff that's located in Franklin, North Carolina and Nashville, Tennessee. We do not send anything overseas, nor do we plan to send anything overseas, okay? Um, another question we have, since I'm talking briefly about turnaround time, with the products that we're reviewing right now, there are validated products. They all go through that human validation staff. So that 24 to 48 hour turnaround time is what's to be expected. We are looking and working on some potential new products, um, a populate product to be very specific that would have a much quicker turnaround time that would only be going through that OCR technology. And that would be something that will be coming most likely very soon for us, okay? All right, so now I want to show you the output and what we have sent back and what we have created for you. So the first file that we have here is this PDF file. This is what you're going to get back with the organized product. And this is where we've taken those documents and bookmarked and labeled them by the payer name and the bookmarks are in the order of a 1040, okay? So you should be seeing that on your screen at this time. And I'm just gonna go through this so you can see, these are the actual documents that were scanned in by the user. And you can just go through and check these out. Now, if you scanned in, let's say some organizer pages and your client actually completed the organizer pages, we will put that information here um, at the bottom of this document under the organizer tab but we will not extract any information off of here for population. It'll just be found here in the PDF. Any um, receipts, mileage report, supporting documents, we'll put that information under the supporting documents tab. Again, we won't extract any information off of here, but you will find it here under this tab so you have access to it. If you were to submit any handwritten documents, I believe we had a question about this earlier, we would put that under a handwritten documents tab in this PDF. Even if you submitted a back or blank page to me, we would put that here under a backslash blank pages tab because we don't delete or get rid of anything you send to us because we don't know what's important for you when preparing the return, okay? So if you submit 55 pages, you're going to get 56 pages back because we add that cover page. All right. But this is what you're going to be getting back with that organized product. It is a completely searchable document. So you can type in a word here in the search feature. And it will find every document that's associated with that word here in this PDF. So it does make it easy to get your hands on a document if you're looking for something. Now, once we've sent this PDF back, a question I always get is, what if I wanna make edits to it? So maybe if you're here under the supporting documents tab, because we don't label each supporting document and you want to come here and rename this, you would have to use a PDF editor tool so you can make those edits because we're just simply doing the organization. 
If you want to make edits to it, that is fine. It is your document at this point to do whatever you'd like with it. Um, I actually have Adobe Acrobat DC installed where it will allow, allow me to make those edits. Um, but if you have another PDF editor, you can use that as well. Okay. Now, Mark was wondering what all is in this supporting documents tab. So I'm just going to click on a few of these so you can get an idea of what we're my folks are putting here in this supporting documents tab. Um, this looks to be a mileage report here. I'm just going to click on a few of these. This looks to be a receipt here. Yeah, several receipts are in this supporting document. Tab. So hopefully that helps in seeing that information. All right, so I'm going to minimize this file and go back to the dashboard. And now if you choose the populate product, you're going to have this XLS file, which is what we call a point sheet. And um, I'm going to open that up on your screen at this time. You should be seeing that. And this is going to show you all of the data that we have extracted off of the forms that is going to populate into the return. So when you open up this XLS file, this point sheet, the information has not yet been populated. You can now review it before it populates. So let's take a look at this, and I'm going to answer a few questions that we've had in regards to what type of data we extract for different forms during this as well. So if you have any questions about that, definitely let us know. So here it has the taxpayer name, the tax year, and the client ID. And right here where it says diagnostics, there could be some notes here. And if there are notes, it is very important for you to review these notes because this is where our human validation staff has seen something that looks off or odd and they want to bring it to your attention. So this says professional review required, inconsistent owner of the social security number, and you need to review for this information to populate. It then references each form that you need to, to do an extra level of review on. Anything in blue, you can hover over. It's going to tell you the page of the PDF that information is on. If you click on it and you have the PDF open in the background, it will actually take you to that page in the PDF. So especially if you're using, you know, a two screen environment, have this PDF up on one screen, have the Excel up on the other screen for the review process. So I'm going to click on the W2. And it's showing us all of the information that we extracted off of that W-2. And this is the information that's going to be populated in the return. So you're just going through and reviewing the data. If you need to make any changes to this, you can. You can make edits to it. You can add information. As long as you save that information, it'll populate over into the return. Also, let's say you don't want information to be entered into the return. You can actually put an X in that column and it won't populate the information. If you don't want an entire page to be populated, you can put an X in the red box and it will not populate that entire page. So you can really manipulate this information. Again, anything in blue, you can hover over. It's going to tell you the page of the PDF that information can be found on. Now, I did have a question about um, trades. Which item would you use if you only wanted the summary for trades? Currently, we do not have a product that does that. Okay, we've talked about it. I don't know if that's something that's coming or when it's coming. But if you so told us to extract trades currently, you would have this trades tab. And it would show every single line item that was on that brokerage statement that was submitted. And this is what's going to get imported into the 8949 of the return. So again, we don't do the totals and summaries with our trades product. Now let's say you submitted a brokerage statement, but you did not tell us to extract trades. You would receive this consolidated 1099 tab 
And we would extract like the dividend information, the miscellaneous, the OID information, but we would not take any of that trade detail off. So a lot of my users, it, what they will use is if they do the totals and summaries and say see attached, they'll just use that populate product. Now with K1s, and I believe we've had a question about K1s, um, I often get questions about K1s, do we work with these? And the answer is yes, we work with the 1065 K1, we work with the 1120 SK1, and we work with the 1041 K1. With that being said, we're really just getting that K1 started. We're taking all of the information off of the first page, which is that federal information off of that K1. Okay, so some of the more complex items of the K-1, that's where you as the preparer would be finishing that information out. So here's a 1065 K-1 that we extracted. Okay, so again, you're just going through and reviewing this information. Once you're done reviewing this information, you're going to come back to the diagnostics. And if you made any changes, you'll save your changes like you would in a typical Excel spreadsheet. You can also click on this check data button. But when you're ready, you're gonna wanna make sure you have your tax software open in the background. Today, I'm gonna be demoing this in LACERT, but the process is the same if you're using UltraTax, if you're using Pro Systems, um, CCH Access. You're going to click on the populate button and it's gonna start populating the data into the return. So you should be seeing that process where it's telling you that it's populating these specific tabs over into the return. Once the population is complete, it'll give you this notification that the population is complete. You click done. And at that point, you can open up the return and review the information that was populated. So once we send the files back, we step out of the picture and you move forward with getting the data into the return by clicking on the populate button and reviewing that data and finishing out the return. Now, a question I often get is, do I have to review the information in this Excel or can I review it just in the return in my tax software? Because that's what I feel more comfortable with. And it really is completely up to you, but here's the thing. If you're waiting to review the data in the actual return itself, please make sure you're reviewing this diagnostics tab because this is where we're gonna communicate to you if there's anything that looks off or odd, okay? Or if there's a specific form we didn't extract data off of because we couldn't read it. So please, if you don't review anything else, make sure you're reviewing this diagnostics tab. All right. Um, but it, once it's been imported, you, you just finish out the return from there. Now, let's say you have a, a client that, you know, kind of gets that piecemeal. They keep on bringing in information. You thought you had all everything, but then a few weeks later, they bring in some additional information. When you have that situation, you can actually come here back to your dashboard find that client's name and there's an option where you can click on this little gear icon to the right of their name and click prepare for resubmission and just resubmit the additional files the client brings in. So you would go through the same process of uploading the information and choosing the products. Okay, so, um, but you would only want to submit the additional documents they bring in. So there's not any issues with duplication and go through that process. Okay, so that's really how Gruntworks works. A question I had received was how many forms can be entered into Gruntworks? Um, I mean, as many as you submit for the client, we can, we can work with there. We do have specific forms that we work with for population. And I'll show you that in just a second. All right, now we do still have a few minutes and I want to show um, the process. What I just showed you, if you're using any other tax software other than Drake tax software, um, this is the process that you'll go through. 
if you're using Drake Tax software and you want to use Gruntworks, gonna pull that up on your screen. Gruntworks is actually built into the Drake Tax software where you use it from within the software itself. You actually never leave the Drake Tax software to use Gruntworks. So you would click on the Gruntworks icon in the toolbar and the Gruntworks application will appear. You'll select the client. You will choose the product. So populate, you'll add your file. So same process as we just went through, but this is done within the application. You will put your actually your email address here to be notified once the job is complete. You'll click submit and the documents will upload to Gruntworks. And once you get the notification that the upload is complete, that means Gruntworks has received the documents and is doing the work in the background. And then you can close out of here, move on and submit another client or close out of the application completely. Okay, so that's how you get the documents uploaded to Gruntworks if you're using the Drake Tax software. To receive them back once you get the notification that the job is complete and ready to be downloaded, you will click on the job status tab. You will, there'll be a box by the client's name because the status shows completed. You will check that box. You will click download. It will download the files from Gruntworks to Drake Tax. That's how we securely get the files back to you. And then the information, the PDF that we've already went through, that information, the trade sheet will reside in the Drake Document Manager. By the client's name, there'll be a plus sign, a Gruntworks folder, and here are those same files that we were reviewing in the actual Gruntworks port portal. So this is where you can open up and take a look at that PDF file where we've organized those documents. Okay. And then the diagnostics, if there was a diagnostics, it would show you that information here. Um, the one thing that's a little bit different is with the, with the data that's extracted, if you're a Drake Tax software user, you can't review that information before it's populated. So that's where that information will go. Then you'll open up the return and a notification will appear that there's a populate job ready to be imported. You will click import. It'll bring up the diagnostics log. And then the information is imported and you can actually see it in the return. So that's how Gruntworks works within Drake Tax. Okay. So I have had a few other questions come through that I want to answer. And then um, if we have a few minutes, I will touch on the pricing. So one question I had is, does it populate the state information from a W-2 or 1099? We don't really work with much state information or state forms, but it, if there is information on the actual federal form itself, we will extract that data. For a brokerage statement, will it extract municipal investment? And the answer is no. Can Gruntworks handle multiple Schedule E's for rentals? Um, we just put that simply in the organized PDF. We're not doing much with that with the extraction of the data. Another question is how would Gruntworks know that a form 1098 is for the third Schedule E and not the first? It's gonna be a, it'd be a selection from within your tax software you, where you would have to manually tell it where to flow to. Do you get charged for any document statements that just have basic information like their privacy notice? Um, yes, and let's talk about pricing here in just a second because I do want to get to two more questions that came through and then we'll touch on that pricing. So some other questions I have received is, um, what 
tax softwares do we work with? So I have mentioned a few. I did get a question, you know, does this integrate with QuickBooks Online? Um, does this integrate with Pro Series? And um, our Organize and our Trades products work with any tax software on the market. The Populate product, and let me see if I can pull this up on your screen at this time. You should be seeing it on your screen. These are the tax softwares that our Populate product currently work with as it stands today. Okay. We do try to add new tax softwares to the list that we work with and we integrate with our Populate product. I do, I'm not aware of any that are coming for the upcoming tax season. Um, it usually takes one to two years to, for us to, to make all of that work. So now I'm gonna to go to our last polling question. And then we'll talk about the pricing. So how much experience do you have with scan, organize, and fill technologies? And while that is being answered, I think I covered everybody's questions, but if you have any other questions, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A area or the chat room, and I'll be happy to answer those questions before we end the webinar today. I think the only other question I had was the new OCR product where it's just the OCR validation. When is that coming? And we're looking at some time in 2021. Okay. All right, so let's touch on that pricing and we will be wrapping up for the day. So what is the cost? So here at Gruntworks, we don't have any subscription costs. We don't have any contracts. We don't have, um, we don't even have any minimums. Um, it's a pricing per page, per form, per trade system. So the cost per return is going to vary based on what you submit to Gruntworks. So for the organized products, it is price per page. For our organized light product, which we didn't really go th through today, it's just a simple organization piece that goes to that OCR technology. It is five cent per page. For the organized product, which is what we did go through today, which has our human validation element included, is 20 cent per page that's submitted. And this is every single page that is submitted, no matter if it's a front page, back page, blank page, it's every single page. So that goes back to the question I had a few minutes ago. What if it is just a, you know, random document that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with that return? If you submit it and scan it up to us, you're going to be charged that per page fee because we're still putting that in that supporting documents tab. For the populate product, we're only going to charge you for the forms we extract data off of, and that's 75 cent per form in addition to your organized cost. So for example, if you submitted one W-2 that was one page, that would you'd have your 20 cent per page cost for organize, and then you'd have your populate per form cost. So it costs 95 cent for us to process that. Then for the trades product, it is 15 cent per line item. So every single line that was in that Excel spreadsheet that I went over, you would be charged 15 cent per trade. All right. So just kind of get a quick scenario. If you had a 35 page document with the full validation and in that there were four tax forms and you selected organize and populate, it would cost $10 for us to process it. Now, if there were 20 trades and you had a brokerage statement you submitted, that would bring the cost up to $13 because you have your trades co cost of 15 cent per trade. So again, it's going to really vary based on what you submit to us. And the list of forms we support for population, if you go out here to gruntworks.com, that should be coming up on your screen at this time. Click on products and populate. 
it's kind of hidden, but it does show you the populate supported forms, which I brought up on your screen at this time. And these are the forms that we're going to charge you the 75 cent per form for if you submitted it to us. Okay, and these are the forms going back to that question. I think Charlotte had asked it earlier, um, how many forms can be entered into Gruntworks? These are the forms we work with and as many as you submit to us, we'll work with. Okay, but of course that will, your costs will vary with that. All right. So that is the pricing structure for Gruntworks. So I did get a question, do we have any bulk specials? We do run different specials throughout the year um, based on if you purchase $500 or greater, there'll be a percentage off. Um, we just got done with one of those specials last the other week um, and we do try to run some to the end of the year or the first of the year before tax season so you can pre-fund your account because going back to that pricing um, with our pricing structure you can use us on a return by return basis or you can pre-fund your account so you can say, hey, you know, after I use my $40 credit they gave me, I want to put $500 in my Gruntworks account. Then every time you submit a return, it will automatically deduct from that account balance. If you don't use all of that money during tax season, it will just roll over for extensions and following tax seasons. It never expires. It's your money to use when you need it, but we don't do refunds either. So um, you know, it's really up to you as to how much you want to spend with Gruntworks. Um, and then I have some users that do on it or use it on a return by return basis. They put enough to process, you know, $20 to process that one, one return and um, go from there. But it's really up to you of how, how much or how little you want to use it. But there are bulk specials throughout the year. Um, so you can get your account funded. Right. I did get a question. What about the state and local tax forms? Does this populate the agency forms? And the answer is no. We're really just working with those federal forms. All right. So I think I have covered everything I wanted to cover today. I hope this was helpful and informative. I hope I got everybody's questions answered. If you have any additional questions, you can reach out to us um, here at Gruntworks. We'd be happy to answer those for you. Um, we do offer one-on-one -on -one demos. If you feel that you want to you know, give this a try, get a little bit of training, you, you can reach out to us. We're happy to walk you through the entire process. And um, I, I, again, thank you so much for your time and I hope you have a, have a great day. Thank you so much, Sarah. Great presentation today. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I will get the presentation PDF and the recording of today's webinar to you later today. If you haven't, go out and vote. And we hope to see you at the next Insightful Accountant webinar. Everybody have a great day.